Live from the PCTV studios, the Monday Morning Quarterback. Hey, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. I'm Dave Ridenour, the Monday Morning Quarterback, and we are definitely in the home stretch of the 2018 high school football season. Only had one game over the weekend, so we have a bunch of things that we want to do. We want to look at the year, wrap it up, look at the high points, the low points, and what we expect to see in the coming years here in our area. Got Rick Pennypacker on deck here. We're waiting to come on. We're going to have a, a quick break and uh, do our normal thing. And we come back, we're going to look at the Pottstown Pottsgrove game and all the things that happened in 2018. Right here on the Vallejo's Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. Yeah. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. Doc's Irish Pub, the hottest new sports bar around. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from awesome burgers to the new outside tiki bar numerous TVs, and Doc's friendly service. Doc's Irish Pub is the place to be. Stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a delicious bite to eat on a fall night. Doc's Irish Pub. This portion of Monday Morning Quarterback is brought to you by A to Z Furniture. A to Z Furniture is located on 296 South Reading Avenue in Boyertown. Back here, and before we go any further, of course, Rick Pennypacker in here, and we want to wish everybody a, a happy Veterans Day. I, I guess is what you say. Yeah, happy Veterans say. Day is sort of sounds funny to me, like Merry Christmas and all that. But we certainly do want to respect and thank all the veterans out there. And again, from the Monday Morning Quarterback, Rick Pennypacker, Gus, and all the gang, we want to wish everybody out there uh, a very nice day, and hopefully, people respect them and. We wouldn't be anywhere without those servicemen, Richard. Absolutely. You know, we all of us know some, and, uh, you know, we thank them for their service. And, you know, it's a volunteer military now, and I think anyone who volunteers for our country is, uh, is a special person. Well, you know, I know that every year that Potsgrove, the last few, have really they uh, uh, recognized the, they, the first responders and some of our servicemen during a game uh, during this year, and they have the, the camouflage gear and all that. That's yeah, always a great they, time, too. Uh, Potsgrove is one of the first ones that ever did that. <clears throat> I think some other people have followed suit. <clears throat> Excuse me, but... Uh, Years ago, you know, Phoenixville, Bill Furlong and I got together and we bought some, some camouflage pants. I don't know where they are now, but uh, we always, always wear the camouflage pants and uh, it, was, it was always a great time. And uh, I know that when the, when the kids walk through the, the tunnel and they shake hands with all the veterans, it's, it's pretty neat. It's a pretty neat thing. It certainly is. And again, <laughs> we want to thank all them for their service, for all the men and women that ever put a uniform on out there to protect uh, the great country that we live. We thank you again. Thank you for your service. Well, you know, Rick, we, uh, we do have our little bit of business to do before we dive into things. Uh, we have our Paul Bauer scoreboard. 
uh, brought to you by Paul Bauer, a local attorney here in the Pottstown area. He's always been very good to us here on the Monday morning quarterback and good for me personally. He does everything from wills to whatever you need. Uh, he's a great guy. He is certainly an attorney that you can count on. Give him a call at 610-624-6800. A great guy, very, very reasonable, and he certainly will work with you uh, in that area. So if we have those scores, and uh, I added a little flair to them this week as well. I'm hoping that uh, we got the, okay, we got just the one, uh, Pottsgrove and Pottstown, 40 to 6. I actually wanted to look at uh, some of the 6A uh, scores as well. I have a, a big interest in that for some reason this year as well, but there's a game that we did right here on the PCTV Network Sports on a nasty rainy day down at the Phoenixville on Friday night, but I wanted to quickly go over those games. North Penn beating the Chamonix in another big, big game, 13-6, to which I, uh, I thought that was a, an interesting game. North Penn certainly had been ranked number one in District 1 for all season. Anytime those two teams play together, it's going to be a barn burner. They've been playing each other for, you know, years and years and years now. And Dick Beck, I know he's always, he always worries about them, but uh, he came out on top. And Downingtown West, both Downingtowns uh, made it to the second round. Uh, Downingtown West uh, played a good Truman team. Truman uh, had a great year out of the Philly area, but Downingtown West wins that one 24-22. And, and look out for the, for the Cougars, so, huh? Yes, yeah, so I was talking to a gentleman down there the other day that played against another coach that played against Truman, and he said Truman's a real deal. They, they had a very good football team this year, and uh, Mike Milano at Downingtown West, when the Whippets, they did a oh, great job. Oh, the Whippets, job. right. Yeah, I'm sorry, Whippets. Whippets, yep. Okay, and a big win for him. Then again, the team that I guess really why my interest has peaked is Coatesville, uh, back in the Chessmont League. We used to play them, and and uh, we used to we used to beat <coughs> Coatesville regularly, and it was always a great game. But you know, down there with the Ortega, uh, father wow. and son coach mm -hmm. and and quarterback, uh, they beat Downingtown East too. We're feeling pretty good about things after they knocked off Spring Ford, and they were chirping a little bit. And, yeah, we were here last week talking yeah. about that. You know, Scott's a good friend of uh, Coach Matters down there, and. And uh, he said some things in the paper, and I know it wasn't anything to be cocky or anything. I think he was just letting his kids know that we're not afraid of Coachville. You know, we're, we can beat them. And uh, but Coachville put it to him pretty yeah, good. Yeah, thirty-eight nothing at <laughs> <Yeah>. halftime. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, and I, I will tell you, if uh, anyone in here in the area, you know, if you're not going to the Pottsgrove game this week, you want to go and check out Coachville. This Ortega kid, I saw some film on him. Uh, he's like a Drew Brees. He's not very big. He's like five ten, five nine, five ten. But I'll tell you what, the kid can throw a football. And I, I have never seen a high school football player, a quarterback in all my years, who can be that stature and still throw a football like him. Well, He's maybe the most accurate passer other than Sturm. I thought Sturm, Sturm was, was a tremendous yeah, accurate. Yeah. This kid is, is as good as yeah. him. Oh, it's, yeah. And he has a pretty strong arm. And, yes, and it, was, it was really kind of a unique night as well. His father won his 100th game at Coachville, and his son Ricky uh, threw his 100th touchdown pass. And he's only a junior. Uh, I think 136 or something is the state record, which he, I think, has in his sights. Yeah, I somewhere think he, yeah. And I, I think he's got a pretty good shot at getting that. But only as a junior, he has over, well, I think he threw about four of them. So he has like 102 or three now. But he threw his 100th pass, touchdown pass as well. And they are a very, very good team. And, and they will take on a tough, tough Garnet Valley squad, dude. You know, we saw them a couple of years ago line up yeah. against PV when they were very, very good. And they'll run that ball down your throat, and they just do not stop. Mike Ricky will get that. He'll get that uh, split, split veer. He'll run the outside veer, inside veer, split backs. And it's just uh, four yards. He's just, he's just going to pound it right down your throat. And he's done a tremendous job down there. And, and, and Mike is one of those guys that you – Never, ever, ever give him a, a game like this. He, he, he always rises to the occasion, and I think it'll be a great game. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because Quakertown handled PV, you know, who is our Pac-10, our Pac <laughs> right. area champion. You know, they knocked off of Potsgrove in that crossover game in a championship game. And, uh, you know, we thought they'd be pretty good. But, man, Quakertown lined up and handled them. Yes. And now Garner Valley lines up and handles uh, Quakertown. Uh, they might give Garner, uh, Coachville a pretty nice game. I think that will be interesting. It's going to be, you know, Ricky Ortega is going to throw the ball over the place, and Mike Ricky and his Garner Valley guys are going to just pound it down the throat. The other thing, you know, if you ever watch Garner Valley play, I, I saw them, I don't know if it was against PV or, or wherever it was, 
But they dress maybe 110 I kids. Know they do. Yeah, they I mean, do. they got double yeah. numbers, yeah, they, and they, yeah, they just yeah. keep coming, yeah. coming, coming. And yeah. you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, I uh, remember watching them do, during pregame warmups, and when they were exercising, they yes. were on the 50 yard line all the way down to the goal line, and there was a lot of guys. There on sure line. is, but yeah. uh, that's a good program. Mike's it, done a great job. It is now. a good program. There should be some really good. There's there's four very very good football teams left in the 6A uh, after this weekend, so it's going to be interesting. And and I kind of wanted to follow that. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Pottstown Pottsgrove game. And again, it was 45 to six the first time they met. Mm -hmm. uh, Pottstown was uh, uh, supposedly an improved team. We had uh, Coach Fisher on here. We had uh, Nehemiah Figueroa, and and uh, you know they were excited. They were really looking forward to the opportunity. Again, another nasty night. Uh, luckily, was played on turf down at Washington Field in Phoenixville, Coach, because it was it was nasty, rainy, cold, particularly in the second half. But boy, I tell you, Pottsgrove uh, did it again. And, and between the tackles, Isaiah Taylor was very, very impressive. Yeah, you know, if you're if you're going to play Pottsgrove, you got to stop them between the tackles. You know, and then when you start loading up that box, they're going to come out and run the option on you. Cisco is going to get around the end. He's going to pitch it to Taylor. And then if you start putting nine, ten guys in the box, they're going to play action pass and hit the Bedoas or Springfield. So they have all the weapons right now. They're on a roll. They're doing a tremendous job over there. The thing that I don't think anyone really understands is Postgrove plays tremendous defense. And those front – if I'm voting for all Frontier Conference, every one of those kids on the front line from Postgrove make first team all Frontier. They, they are – those four guys, Tornetta, Adams, Bedoas, and Seaman – those four guys set the tone for Postgrove. They're, they're tough kids. They're hard-nosed kids. And they don't let anyone get to second level and block those linebackers. And uh, I, I just think that uh, they're on a roll. And, uh, you know, I think they're doing a tremendous job. Well, they only gave up 60 total yards in the game. Yeah. And, and a big chunk of that came on a, on a little flea flicker uh, special play when they uh, threw it to Figueroa, who turns around and throws it to Darden down the seam. And, he got lost in the secondary there in, in the beginning of the game, which was their only touchdown uh, of the night. And after that, they didn't get a whole lot. I mean, they had Wiggins. They had a lot of frustration on the Trojans. Ooh. And it sort of showed by the end of the game. And I was a little disappointed that Pottstown let their emotions get the best of them in that fourth quarter. Uh, it, you know, because they, they played. They had a good season, 6-6, six and six, Coach Fisher in his yeah. second year. They made it to the district finals. Uh, obviously, the outcome wasn't what they wanted or had hoped for. But still, you know, they lost to a very, very good football team, and uh, they let things get away from them a little bit towards the end of the game. But, but again, Postgre deserves all the credit. In that yeah, one. you don't want to have a sour taste in your mouth at the end of the game like that, you know. And, and it's, it's really tough because when, when you're in the district playoffs and when you're in the state playoffs, you know that you're either going to be state champion or the last game you play, you're going to lose. And some of those kids, you know, they, they put so much into it, and then now their season's over. It, it ends just like that. That's a, it's tough emotionally, and. Uh, you know, Postgrove, uh, I, they got to get their special teams back now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been bragging yeah, on their are, special you're, you're teams. I'm always, Ford, I'm like, telling him he's always doing, yeah, he's got to get that down this week, you know. Um, Can't give up They got the place. best punter. They got they the do. best the best punter in the, in the state. He was, I read today on, on stats in the state that he is the number one ranked punter in the entire state, every class. So, uh, you know, they got they got those guys out there, but. You can't. You get in the playoffs now. You can't be giving up cheap points, and uh, they gave one up at PV, and they're giving some up. I need that extra point block too. I think, <sighs> but, which uh, you don't want to give them up either. Uh, but, but then they, again, yeah. they blocked an extra yeah, point. They did. Yeah, they did. So I yeah. mean, it, it all comes around. But well, that was Nehemiah. That was Nehemiah who, who his ball gets over the bar by about a foot and a half, even when he nah. kicks it good. He's certainly not the uh, the talent that uh, Sereni is. But yeah, they do have a, a lot of good players, and of course, Bedolus was a force, uh, and then you know the. A couple of linebackers, too, Kennedy and Owens and those guys for, for Pasco played you know, very, very well. You well know, people well. don't hear much about Owens. Uh, you know, that young kid has been – he's been playing over there for three years now. He started out as a fullback or guard and went to fullback. And so we put him at nose guard, and now he's playing linebacker. And, uh, you know, he's a self-made football player. He did a lot of work in the offseason to get where he is today. And, you know, I congratulate that kid. He's – He's one of those kids that you, you, as a coach, you're very proud of to see where he is. Yeah, they, they have a couple, like I said, unsung heroes on that team. But, you know, those offensive and defensive linemen, Coach Hawthorne will tell anybody that's the heart and soul of his team. And they certainly proved that again on on a Friday night. And, again, those holes were nice. And, and even Cisco, you know, he's usually more of a factor in the mm -hmm. game, but he didn't even have to run the ball too much in that ball game. And, 
and it was I was talking to some of the people up in the in the booth. I said, you know, I I know they're going to win and go on, and they're going to play Jersey Shore. Maybe they didn't want to show them too much. Uh, yeah. Maybe they you know they did or they didn't, but uh, we'll see how it goes. But Jay Cisco certainly had the game under control as well, and had a couple nice runs for some touchdowns. Yeah, you know, Jay Jay's a two year starter over there. He knows the offense. Billy's put him in a situation where he's successful. You know, I think that in the beginning of the year, you know, they tried to do a little bit too much with him, and I think they they geared it back a little bit, you know. And uh, but after the Methacton game, I think they got a little bit back into some old things that we did downhill running and everything and letting those offensive linemen just tee off, and that's what they're doing. And I think uh, the Cobra kid, the, the big surprise to me with Potsgrove this year is the Cobra kid at fullback. Uh, you know, they had Glover, in, right. uh, Glover and Taylor in the backfield at the same time, and then they got put Glover – let him concentrate on defense, defense and put yep. this Cobra. But the other two unsung heroes that, that, are, that are never talked about on this are the two sophomores playing on the offensive line. Uh, I think the one's Allen Kidd and the other one's McHugh. Those two kids are, are, are playing as sophomores with, with those upperclassmen up there. And they're, they're not great, but they're doing an okay job. And they're do, doing an adequate job, and they're getting better every week. And uh, I think that's really been one of the improvements of Pasqua on that offensive line. Well, that and, uh, has been working, that's for sure. Again, Isaiah Taylor, over 200 yards and three touchdowns. He certainly was a, dis di a difference maker. And I said uh, during the delicate, I didn't realize he <coughs> had the breakaway speed that he had. He outran Pottstown secondary. They had the angle on him. Safety had the angle on him. And he blew right by him. And, and uh, I was impressed that Taylor was able to have some good breakaway speed. Yeah, he can run. Yeah, he's fast. You know, all those kids are fast, though. Yeah. You know, so uh, Glover's game. fast, and yeah. and Caden White's fast, and Springfield's fast, and and the one that's fast is uh, all of them is Jay Cisco's fast. Yeah. So, you know that that speed kills, and uh, when you have speed and you have a, a powerful offensive line like they do, I think there's nothing back. And I'm waiting. I think one of these games, Springfield is really going to break loose and have a big offensive production, whether <laughs> special teams and I. I mean, he's he's just he just looks to me like he's ready to have a big game. I mean, you haven't really needed him. Uh, Potsgrove has you know used him in, in certain situations. Obviously, as a corner, he plays the best receiver on the other team and tries to shadow him and shut him down. Down, but I'm waiting for Springfield to, to have a big play or two, and maybe it could be this week against Jersey Shore. Yeah, he's, in the beginning of the year, he has some big plays on special teams, and uh, you know he, he's a, 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 a lanky kid, yeah. not real, but he can run and he has some great moves and. Uh, I'm sure that's in Coach Ford's plan this week to get him the ball special teams. Absolutely. Well, again, let's, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the season, and let's look at a couple of teams before we take a quick time out here. And let's, well, I, I only wrote, I wrote them down alphabetical for whatever reason, and let's start over on Boyertown. Rick, you know, we had some high hopes for Boyertown this year. T.J. Miller in his second year, uh, they, they, showed some, uh, they showed some spurts at the end of last year, and they had uh, Ada Mathias back. They had Moshe Kid who can run with with all of them, uh, the numbers were up over there. They win their first game against Upper Perk in, in that big crosstown rivalry game, the for, you know the former uh, Thanksgiving Day game, and then they lose nine straight ball games after that. And I, I just I'm, I'm still uh, scratching my head over the Boyertown Bears. Me too. And I told you in the beginning of the year, you asked me uh, who was going to compete with PV and and Springfield. I, I Springfield, and I said Boyertown was one of the teams I thought was going to really be. And I don't know, you know, I don't know what happened over there. I, I don't know if there were some injuries. I don't know if they're, you know, they, they just, Jerry Cap and, and the other fullback they had last year, if those two guys were, were, and their linemen were so good that they just couldn't replace them. But the, the one thing you can't do is you can't give up 38 points a game. Yeah. And that's how, that was their average on defense, and I think that's, that's where they went back. Yeah, they did, and they gave up 350 total yards per game as well. They couldn't stop the run, and, and you know, not that teams had to throw the ball much against them, but they got some, some uh, uh, yardage through the air as well. But, you know, you're giving up 38 points a game, and you're giving up 350 uh, total yards per game, and you're only scoring about two touchdowns. That's not a good recipe no. over there. And we certainly – I like T.J. Miller. I think he's got good energy. I think he's going to do some good things over there. Hopefully people will buy into his program and help him out. But that, you'd have to look at that as, as one of the disappointments in yes. the pack uh, this year. And I'm sure that, you know, every high school football coach right now is, is taking a break, you know, for a couple weeks, and then they'll get their kids back in the weight room. And 
they'll reflect on the season. I'm sure TJ will, will, will do a great job over the offseason here trying to figure out what happened. And again, they're getting some new and, new, uh, new and improved facilities over there, Rick. Uh, you know, they're getting a new weight room. They're doing some more things that way that hopefully these kids buy into that program, get a little bigger, stronger, faster. And, and uh, who knows, maybe they can compete next year and get themselves into and, the race. And they had a, a very good freshman team. Yeah, they did. Yep, very I good. I was told nice they had a very good freshman team. Yeah. So, you know, that's where you got to go. You got to get your feeder program. You got to work those kids, build them up, and, and, and build from there. Okay, next school we're going to look at is Methacton. Dave Lotier in his first year, a young, energetic guy, uh, a, a guy who really had some, some big ideas, brought in Zuli, a uh, former quarterback from, from PV, to help him run his offense. And, and they certainly were a lot more competitive this year. If you're looking for a team with much improvement, you'd have to put Methacton in there. They, they only won one game, but uh, they won a big game, and, and that's what that matters for them. And, again, offensively, they really struggled. They only scored seven points a ball game but defensively they only gave up 21 Rick so they improved on the defensive side of the ball that there weren't a lot of 44 to nothing games that Mathacta was involved in like they had in the previous couple of years yeah they they from last year to this year they doubled their points per game now the 7.2 points a game is not a lot of points but they did improve from last year yeah. and they cut in half the amount of points that the opponents had last year this last year so they have made some improvements on both sides of the football the, the, also, they had 109 tackles for loss, which I read on the, online today. That is the number one uh, team in the state of Pennsylvania, 6A, every class. They had 109 tackles for loss, and no other team in the state has had that many. So, you know, they got some kids back next year. They got the Romano kid back and the Torsini kid back, and uh, – I'm sure that another year into coach, Coach's offense down there, they'll be okay. Well, you know, you told me before, and I thought so myself, but the big difference between the first year and the second year of coaching, That's you it. learn a lot about yourself, mm -hmm. about the team, about the kids you have, and, and I'm sure Dave Lutier is, is going to translate that into some more good things down at Mathak. There's always there's an old adage in coaching, you know, when you're a new coach your first mm -hmm. year, Eh, the second year is your year. The second year is where you put your stamp on the program. I think Coach Latier will put his stamp on the program. Like Victor Brown has done yeah, this year. Yeah. You know, I think I think it's uh, you know Victor Brown. We'll talk about him a little bit later, but. To me, that's one of the biggest surprises of, of the season here so far. Okay, let's go down to Norristown now. Uh, Jim Milligan in his first year taking over a, a program that has really been up and down. And, you know, always some pretty good athletes down in Norristown. Uh, for whatever reason, they haven't been able to put it all together. But three and seven, two and three in, uh, in divisional play and, and with the big schools there in the Liberty Division. Uh, again, offensively, they, they struggled only scoring 10 points a game. But defensively, they weren't too bad, really. Yeah, you know, they they had a pretty good year offense or defensively, you know. I thought they they, they held your opponents uh, to a probably an all-time 18. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good for them. But you know, you can't turn the ball over. Their quarterback turned the ball over. I think he threw 17 interceptions this year and, and you just can't do that. Now, he's a young kid. He's, he's you know, he's they they had the sophomore come in here and get some time playing quarterback, but yeah, I think I think they have made some grounds. I think they're getting their feet wet. You know, as Coach Milligan's going to get his feet wet. He's going to learn a little bit about playing Springfield, playing Park Valley, playing some of these teams. He got some young kids to play, get some playing time. So. Hopefully, you know, they'll, they'll springboard into a good year next year. Well, you know, you hit on a, a big key that I had written down, too, as well. Daniel Watson is a quarterback who won a job. They had been sharing in the beginning of the year with uh, another uh, quarterback, Denoffy, right. and Watson wins the job. But you mentioned that he only threw four touchdown passes and 17 interceptions. So that's certainly something that, that Coach uh, Milligan is going to work with. Right, him. and also penalties. You know, I think we, we even were here one time where – they had more penalty yards than they had offensive Correct, yards, you yeah. know, and, and yeah. you can't be having 150, 160 yards of penalties a game. Absolutely. But I'm sure they'll, they'll do well. They'll, they'll do a good job. I'm sure Coach Milligan gets his feet wet, gets him in the weight room, gets his coaches on the same page with him. He came in late. I mean, he wasn't yeah, right. hired in, yeah, in right. January, yeah. February. He came yeah. late. Yeah, like so he was just thrown yeah. right into the program. Yeah. So I'm sure he'll get everything going down there. I, I agree with that, and we, we hope for the best for uh, Coach Milligan down there, as with all the coaches here. Now, over in Bucktown, uh, Rich Kolka, in his fourth year, and again, it's, it's amazing when you look at the youth of all these coaches, and, and Coach Kolka is one of the senior members, if you will, in his fourth year. The Cats go six and five. 
uh, three and two. A little disappointing finish as they lose to Daniel Boone in that Burks, uh, Burks game, yeah. uh, championship game that won at Boyertown. Actually won last year. Uh, they lost to Upper Marion in the crossover game, which kicked them out, or knocked them out, I should say, of the uh, District 1 playoffs. So that bumped them down a little bit. So a little bit of a disappointment at the end of the season for the Cats. But Cooper Chamberlain uh, is certainly a young quarterback that they can build on and Probably next year, uh, some good things. From the yeah, class. he's back next year. Yeah. Cooper Chamberlain's back. They have eight starters coming back on defense next year. So uh, the, the thing that really killed me was they have a kid there named Bryce Pippen, who's a freshman, yeah. who led their team in tackles yeah. as a freshman. Yeah. So I'm there going, wow. And, you know, then they're going to lose Howard, you know, who has a school record of 12 sacks this year. Uh, I'm sure Coach Kolka, I, I read some comments that he's put in, in the paper and things that his kids got to get in the weight room, get bigger, stronger. They got to get a little more physical, you know. And, and, and I thought if they had to, you know, if Marcus Martin would have been a little bit more healthy this year, yeah. you know, he just didn't get on track. It always looked like he was always having some nagging injury. I saw him play three games this year, and I saw him early in the season against uh, Upper Marion, and he really was something else. And then I, I don't know what happened as the year went on. He but had some leg problems. Yeah, yeah. you know, but they'll, they'll be okay. Yeah. I think Coach Coca has the right, right idea. But the thing that, the thing that I can't understand with, with O&J right now is they had some really tough kids last year. I mean, that, uh, we played against them uh, years ago, but I, I was Scherfel kid. Yeah, Krumanacker kid. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and yep, the, yeah, yep. Krumanacker kid. Yeah. You know, I didn't see those kids this year. I think that's – I don't know if they're rebuilding, but they got those eight kids coming back on defense next year. But some of those kids should go back and watch the Bradford kid play, the Krumanacker kid play, the Scherfel kid play. Those guys were those guys were tough kids over there. Well, O and J traditionally have been always a ooh, tough bunch of gang, ooh, and you know we ooh. we we love uh, old Hank Burnett and Joe Edwards and those guys, and and uh, they certainly had a tradition of, of tough tough kids over in in Bucktown. Another young guy, Dante Denardo, whose name sort of popped up all the time, was yeah. only a freshman. So <laughs> Pippin is a freshman, Denardo a freshman, two kids who really played a lot, and and I tell you the the Pippin kid is such a good athlete. He was actually the backup quarterback. Uh, he had to play when Chamberlain got hurt in a, in a game or two. So he is, is certainly a versatile guy, not only the leading tackler. Yeah, and they, gotta ha they have eight starters back on defense next year. If they can get a run game to complement Coop, uh, Cooper Chamberlain throwing the ball to Denardo and some of those guys, they get a run game with some linemen up front, hey, they're going to be a force to reckon with next year. Okay, and of course, Perk Valley, who was our three-time uh, Pioneer Athletic Conference champions, knocked off Potsgrove in the championship game. They were 5-0 and uh, in the league, and uh, that's the third straight year that they were undefeated in the Liberty Division uh, uh, play. I know uh, Rob Heiss was really proud of his seniors. They had never lost uh, a game in the Pioneer. Pioneer Athletic Conference, eight and three overall. A little dis, uh, disheartening uh, loss to Quakertown in round one of the uh, district playoffs. But again, another solid year for for the uh, for the Vikings for sure. Yeah, you know, uh, I was part of those losses with them. You know, they they beat Pottsgrove two years when I was there. They beat them this year, three years in a row. They won the Pac-10. You cannot take anything away from those kids for that. You can't take anything away from the coaching staff. You know, I know Rob is a little disappointed that they didn't go farther in the districts, but uh, boy, you know, Peter Lynn, I don't think he really ever recovered from that injury he had. You know, they, they throw a freshman in there, that kid comes in and plays against Pottsgrove and does a tremendous job. And, uh, but the kid that I really liked was that Rowley kid. You know, he led, the, he led the entire league in tackles. He sat over here one night, and I, I saw him, and I'm there. This, that's, that's not him. I know. That's the, <laughs> I, know. I, I swear. I, I, could you, yeah, he looked like a same? Boy Scout. He I'm sat right lying. in here, I, and I'm I was thinking, wondering, how is this kid? He turns it on. He, I thought maybe oh my he was gosh. A, a, you know, <laughs> my legs. Yeah, yeah. And, boy, when I watch him play, yeah. he is just, he's just a different kid. Yeah, and, he is. Oh, my goodness. He really is. And, he, you know, the, the, uh, they, got some good, they got good young kids coming they back. Do. They got Motion Stern coming back. They got the Kohler kid coming back, and that 3-5 stack defense that Coach Randy Washington, who I thought really came Absolutely. on in the secondary, had a couple big plays for him, and Jake Sterling, who made it, who was their second leading tackler. I mean, mm -hmm. they're going to have some good players. And again, there's another team that I think has a pretty good, solid ninth grade team coming up. Scotty Furman and those guys. You know, it's pretty good when you have former head coaches coaching in the junior high. That that really helps out your system, and those kids learn how to play football. You got to have a feeder program yeah. that can that can that can bring these kids in. And I know that, you know, most schools do have a good program like that. 
Spring Ford, PV, and I know L and J. So I'm sure that those Liberty Division teams will all have a good team next year. And again, they scored over 27 points a game this year. And again, the defense gets overlooked quite a bit because they're so prolific offensively. But you know, they held teams under 20 points, and and they did a real good job. Again, not big, not physical, or not imposing anyway. Physical, but man, they get a lot of guys through the football. Yeah. And, they, and they are good tackles. Yeah, and you know. And, and the Dominate kid, he had a great yeah, year for him yeah. down there, you know. And, and, and But I, I will tell you, it's, this goes to say a lot about coaching. You know, I always think that sometimes coaching is overrated. I, I think that, uh, you know, the kids kids and, the, and they play. But uh, but those guys on PV are, are, are a good staff. It is you know, a good you staff. You got Youngie, you got yep. you know, Basil, yep. and you got all, Conley and all those guys. And, and they just they just mesh well. And, they, and I think that says a lot about a lot about PV. I agree. And the last one before we take a little break is down at Phoenixville, Don Grinstead in his first year, four and six, but only one and four in, um, in the uh, um, Frontier Division, which I thought was a little unusual. He, you know, Grinstead was one of those guys who really wanted to get into the two divisions, Rick. And you remember from our conversations before, and he wanted to play schools more his size. And, and he had an opportunity in, in, the, uh, in the Frontier Division, but they didn't really play as well as I thought that they were going to. You know, you and I talked about the, their running backs, and, and they had Alex Washington and Pinella and those guys. And, and, uh, but they, they, they didn't play great on defense, and they still gave up a lot of points. Yeah, they gave up a lot of points. And, you know, and, and I don't think they were as physical as, as, as a uh, – a Phoenixville team that we have seen in the past. You know, they had three seniors coming back that I think they were going to put their hats on this year. You know, Pantella, or Pantania, Pinella, and Washington. And, uh, you know, Washington and Pinella, they, they both ran. Washington had 750 yards, and but Pantania only threw for two touchdowns. Know. And, uh, you know, I think I think that maybe was, was – everyone was loading the boxes up on them. But, uh, yeah, I mean – Three teams in the in the uh, frontier division went one and four, four yeah. and uh, they're one of them. And I thought that they would have a little bit better year. I yeah. thought, I really did. I thought they would challenge Pottsgrove and PJP this year, and, and maybe, maybe you know, I don't know anything about their offensive defensive line. I don't know about any of those things coming back, but I'm sure that they'll be they'll be better next year. All right, well, we're going to take a quick timeout. We're having a good time here, breaking down the highlights, the lowlights, and everything in between of the 2018 Pioneer Athletic Conference season right here on the Vallejo Stun Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243, 800-222-0243, or online at fredbeans.com. Doc's Irish Pub, the hottest new sports bar around. From live entertainment to countless draft beers. From awesome burgers to the new outside tiki bar. Numerous TVs and Doc's friendly service. Doc's Irish Pub is the place to be. Stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a delicious bite to eat on a fall night. Doc's Irish Pub. Welcome to the office of John H. Griesmer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, whether that's income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we are committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Griesmer, Jr. Call us today or visit our website now. Yeah. Back here at the PCTV Network Studios at Pottstown Senior High School, Dave Ridenour, Rick Pennypacker, bringing you all the wrap-ups 
of the 2018 season here in the Pioneer Athletic Conference. Rick, we got through half of them. Uh, let's jump over there to Pope John Paul, Rory Graver in his fifth season. Again, another one of the senior guys, if you will, and he still looks like a young guy senior to, to guy. you and I. I like yeah, that. I like one of the that. senior members of the uh, mm -hmm. of the coaching fraternity, and in his fifth season, school record for wins eight uh, eight of them, uh, eight and three, four and one. A uh, little disappointment at the end there. I, I really think that they hoped yeah. and thought that they had a good shot in the districts this year, and uh, they come up on the, on the small end after winning twenty one nothing at the halftime and. Boy, they sort of fell apart at the end, but a pretty good season and a lot of underclassmen for the Johnnies. And, you know, Rory's got to be a little disappointed because he's up 21 nothing to a team he beat the second week of the season. And then to see the fall apart like that, you know, on some on some turnovers and things like that. But, hey, hello, welcome Kamal Gray to the pack, to the pack. You know, the kid lit it up this year, 2,250 yards. He had 28 touchdowns. He's only a junior. Uh, we, have some, we have some very good junior quarterbacks in the league. As a Scarback kid led the area, led the league in, in receptions, and uh, you know, then the Cordmos kid, who's only a sophomore, he's there. So, hey, there. I always think that Rory is always worried about his offensive defensive line. I think if he ever gets a offensive defensive line the way he wants it, you know, they're going to be they're going to be legit. And, and they have improved though. They their really have. Yeah, their yeah, offensive year defensive was... lines for sure. Defensively, they only gave up 17 points a game, and I know they they sort of had the uh, the outscore them mentality there yeah. for a while down at Pope John Paul. But this year, I really do think there was a lot of improvement. I think this uh, Dobrolowski kid, who was probably their best uh, two-way lineman, he's only a junior. He'll be back, as you wow, said, to go along with those skill players they have with Gray and Scarbuck and Carmos, they certainly are going to be a team to, to be uh, reckoned with uh, next year. But again, they did a heck of a job and got into the playoffs, and, and an 8-3 and three record uh, is, is certainly commendable for Pope John Paul. All right, let's talk about your old squad, Bill Hawthorne, in his first year, 11-1. Uh, District 1 champions, 5-0 uh, and o in the Frontier Division. Uh, unfortunately, if you're a Falcon fan, they lost to, to PV in the uh, championship game. But what a heck of a season, 11-1. Uh, and one, um, You know, what else can you say? 31 points, a uh, ball game. Uh, they only gave up 10 a game defensively. So, you know, that brand of football that you, uh, you implemented and installed many years ago was came to the fruition again this year. They are... They are what they are, you know, and, and a lot of teams will try to copy what they do. They, uh, you know, I think Coach Hawthorne and his staff did a tremendous job this year. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they had a lot of kids to, they had to fill in from last year. I think we lost 14 starters and 15 starters from last year. They had nine seniors start on defense this year. Some of those seniors never played football before, but they threw them in there. They did a great job. We were talking about the Kennedy kid who was a backup quarterback. He comes in when Caden White got hurt and played very well. I still love Isaiah Glover at, at safe or at, at, at outside linebacker. But, again, it's those guys up front, that mentality that Potsgrove has. Uh, it's a culture of winning over there, and it all starts with the guys up front. I will tell you, you, you and, and, and I'm sure when you have Coach Arthur, he'll tell you too, you, you, we see Ryan Badolas go crazy on the football field, but people got to watch Ryan Badolas in the weight room. That 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 mentality he has on the football field is the same way in the weight room. When he was in the weight room and I was coaching over there, I wouldn't talk to the kid. He he was just he would put 500 pounds on that squat and he would do it. And, and you know he would just stay away from that kid. He's just that mentality rubs off, and it rubbed off the Adams, it rubbed off the Seaman, and it rubbed off the Tornetta, and it rubbed right on down the line. And now, hey. They're, they're, they're just – they're going to be hard to beat. And they are going to be hard to beat. And, again, with that little little coach on the field, uh, uh, Cisco, the Cisco kid there, again, he mm -hmm. does some good things out there. And, and just when you don't expect it, man, he pulls one and tucks it and, and really has deceiving speed as well. But, again, a lot of – a good mixture of, of seniors and some younger some younger kids. Again, a pretty senior-dominated uh, uh, defensive uh, team as well. But uh, some young kids there. But again, look at the numbers there when they only give up 10 points a game. You're going to win.
win a lot of ball games there, and we continue to, to wish them all the best as they continue into the state playoffs. All right, let's go to my alma mater, Mark Fisher, team that lost to Pottsgrove in the um, in the district final, six and six overall. Disappointing one and four though in that frontier division. You know, you talked about Phoenixville, you talk about Upper Perk, and you talk about Pottstown. They all finished one and four, and they all took turns beating each other. So it was kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought that they would probably do a little bit better in the frontier division, but they made strides. Josie, Josiah Wiggins uh, had a good, solid year for him. You know, we talked about the Darden boys uh, on Friday night. Jacob Wise, uh, Oyster. You know, their their boogaboo and Achilles' heel maybe is their offense offensive and defensive linemen. They haven't been able to produce those big, strong, strapping kids that they used to have, and, and it, it sort of hurt them, and they got yeah. worn out against Pottsgrove. They used to have them. Believe me, when, when, when back in the day, they had some big, strong Nixon kids and all those guys. Mm -hmm. Wow, we would hate to even come over here and play against them. But, you know, yeah, uh, the Darden kids were, were a surprise. I don't know if everyone thought they were going to compete. But the Wiggins boy is the real deal. I really love watching that kid play. But my favorite one is Nehemiah Figueroa. Yeah. You know, he was in my class when he was in ninth grade over Potts Grove. The kid led the area in the interceptions. He's a great kid. I think he is a hard worker, and I'm, I'm, so, I'm proud of him. I'm, I'm happy for him because he's, he's having some success over here. Uh, I read in the paper early in the year where Coach Fisher had 11 sophomores play at the end of their last game last yeah, year, yeah. and now they're all coming yeah. in. Yeah. So hopefully those juniors got enough work this year. They stay together. They get in the weight room. They, they listen to their coaches. You know, and they go out and get some other kids to come out and play and, and get some enthusiasm in the school. But, but Dave, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in this. You know, you got to have a coach in the school. Mm -hmm. you, can, you know, and, and Pottstown does not have any coaches on their football staff that coaches in the school. And I, th I think that does hurt them. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I think that you got to have some coaches in the school because I think any high school football coach will tell you, you do a lot of coaching off yeah. the field. Oh, yeah. You know, in yeah. the hallways, yeah. in your office, during class. You know, you see – and we don't see those kids until after school. Eh. I agree. I, I agree. And nothing, nothing against Coach Fisher. Uh, he, he teaches no, in, in not, the Great Valley School District. And it, it's just got to be tough. I mean, even keep an eye on their grades, on their behavior, their hallway stuff, uh, whatever's going on, attendance. Uh, it, it's a tough, tough job when you're not in the building. And I, I don't, I'm not sure if there's qualified people at the Pottstown High School. I, I've been sort of removed from that uh, for quite a few years now as, as far as the, the coaching uh, um, uh, ability of of these guys or not, but uh, I, I do agree. But for for being outside, he, he's done a, a very very good job. Right. Now let's go down to Royersford. Uh, Chad Brubaker in his ninth season, he is the senior member of the Pioneer <laughs> Athletic Conference coaches. Um, eight and three, four and one. Uh, I'm a little disappointed again at the end of the season. I I, I think uh, they had their big rivalry game against Park Valley, and the young freshman came in there and and then won that big game uh, against uh, Springford at Springford, and uh, that great atmosphere down there. Uh, and then they, they have a tough first round draw in the playoffs against uh, Downingtown East, I believe, and yes, uh, yes. East uh, sort of steamrolled them a little bit and and overpowered them in, in that ball game. But again, another solid year, thirty point thirty two points uh, a game offensively and he gave up 20 on defense and and of course Ryan Engro is going to be the uh, object of everybody looking at this young guy boy I talked to Chad last week uh, after his game with Downingtown and he, he admitted that he was kind of surprised I don't know if surprise is the right word but he thinks he's a year away he was they, they had to rebuild they played a lot of young kids and boy did they play a lot of young kids and this Engro kid come in there and start, starts for the first year and he you know, he has 29 touchdowns, he has 2,500 yards passing, and he's got this ba banana, ba ba banana, banana yeah, kid, yeah. you know, and he has 52 receptions, 10 TDs. I think he broke the school record for most receptions in a year. Then you got Scarcell, and, yep. you know, and then that little D-back, I think his name, Andrew Yoon or yeah, something, you know. Yeah. They're all back next yep. year. Yep. I don't know about his lineman. I know he loses, know he loses the big kid, yeah. you know, the, big, the yeah. big defensive lineman. He loses, yeah. he loses. I love the Yuba kid and the Brill kid, but – I think spring forward next year, I think Chad will make a conscientious effort this year to, to be a little bit more balanced next year, yeah. to, to run the ball a little bit more. Because spring forward, they were always really, really good. 
when they had that Jones kid and all those guys, they always ran the ball well. And yeah. I think that's something that they're going to try to do more next year. Yeah, they year. averaged only a little over 100 yards per game rushing this year. Now, again, we talked about him a little bit earlier. Vic Brown, uh, certainly a guy who did a heck of a job in his second season down at Upper Marion, turned that team around. Probably the most improved team in the Pioneer Athletic Conference, 6-5, and five, uh, three and 3-2, made the 5A playoffs. Um, offensively, they didn't play quite as well, but defensively is really where they made some strides. And, you know, they were second to Potsgrove in almost every category on the defensive side of the ball from uh, points to total yards. So major strides for Vic Brown in his second year. Yeah, my, you know, I, I think you got to congratulate Victor, you know, and I'm sure he's uh... – He's, he's excited for next year because he has some young kids playing on that defense. He had a couple kids in, you know, that Lubin kid and Stone kid, both of them each had five and four interceptions. Yeah. And they're back. And the quarterback got better as the year went, went on, and he's back next year, you know. And I think he started out a little bit, you know, I saw him against Owen Jay at the beginning of the year, and he was a little, you know, a little, little shaky at quarterback, wasn't real confident. Then I saw him at the end of the year, he was a little more confident. He, uh, they're going to be the real deal next year, and he'll get him in the weight room. Victor's a go-getter, and he has a great staff. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think that you know, if, if I'm one of the teams in the Frontier Division, I'm I'm looking out for Upper Merion. I agree. And the last team we have is Upper Park, Tommy Hans, in his fifth year. A little disappointing year, very kind of similar to the Boyertown year, which we thought that Tommy Hans was going to continue what he did the year before, when they had a very very solid uh, solid team that got into the district playoffs. But three and seven and one and four for Upper Perk. I know Tyrese Reed was hurt quite a bit of the, of the year, but uh, they had the weary kid. They, they they had some players back that I thought were going to be uh, going to be good solid players again, and they're usually really tough. But offensively, they only scored 16 points a game, Rick, and they just really could not get it done on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, the offensive line was young. I mean, last year when we played them in the district finals. You know, we all felt like their offensive line was one of the better offensive lines we've seen all year. And then he loses them all. And when you have a mass graduation like that on the offensive line, you have to rebuild it. It, it was tough. And then, you know, the kid gets hurt. The reed kid gets hurt and doesn't play. But the weary kid, you know, he's he, he had a great year for him. And, uh, you know, it, it's it, – it, it, Tommy said in the paper, I read him, uh, somebody said in the paper that it's like you got to – Upper Perk has one great year, two good years, and then they fall back for two or three years, and then they come back up. And uh, I, I think that's that's something that he has to really has to challenge him because you, you can't do that. You got to be a little more consistent, right? Yeah. You got to be a little more consistent, yeah. you know. And uh, I'm sure that he knows that. And I'm sure he'll be he'll be looking forward to next year. Well, that's going to do it for our 2018 wrap up. We have the uh, Pottsgrove coach Bill Hawthorne waiting in the wings. We're going to get him on here for a couple of minutes, talk a little bit about that Pottstown game, and then of course their big matchup in round number one of the state playoffs against Jersey Shore. So we're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back. We got Bill Hawthorne from Pottsgrove waiting in the wings. I'm going to thank Rick again for stopping over and giving us some good knowledge here on the 2018 season. We're going to take a quick timeout, and then we'll be right back with Billy Hawthorne of the Potts Grove Falcons. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. Doc's Irish Pub, the hottest new sports bar around. From live entertainment to countless draft beers. From awesome burgers to the new outside tiki bar numerous TVs, and Doc's friendly service. Doc's Irish Pub is the place to be. Stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a delicious bite to eat on a fall night. Doc's Irish Pub. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. 
They're open six days a week. Fred Bean's Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243. 800-222-0243 or online at fredbeans.com. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. Welcome to the office of John H. Griesmer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, whether that's income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we are committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals Look forward to working with you. At Blahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Blahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. Hey, we want to thank again all the good people, Michael Grader and everybody else over at Mike's Brick Oven Pizza. They always give us a good deal over here for our guests and our crew, so they have something good to eat. Uh, but again, I want to thank them. Number one in Stromboli's and pizzas and hoagies. Stop over there at Evans and East Street uh, and have a great, or actually Charlotte and East Street and have a good one. All right, here he is, Bill Hawthorne, first year, 11 and 1, ho hum, district champion, doing a heck of a job. Uh, first of all, congratulations, my man. Really, uh, that's awesome. 11 1 in the District 1 Championship. Uh, you have to be very, very happy with where your program is. Yeah, it was a fantastic year. Uh, thanks for having, having me, by the way. And uh, yeah, I mean, really, it's a credit to the kids. They just worked hard. They did all the things necessary to continue tr the tradition and culture of winning at Pottsgrove. You know, and there's a, a big group of people that I have to uh, thank, and that's my assistant coaches. You know, I think any good head coach will tell you that you're only as good as your assistants and we and I have some great assistants of Bill Bradford, Preston Moser, Brent Herring, uh, Josh Ford, Eric Angstrom, Josh Lindy. I mean right on down the line these guys all the way down to Keith Schur and Cody Robbins to do the ninth grade they all of the, all of those individuals are instrumental in our success and I couldn't be do anything without them. Well, you know, we talked a little bit earlier in the year, and, and when Gary Dorenza was the athletic director, and now he's up in an administrative position, you know, he said it was a no-brainer. It was a great transition from Rick Pennypacker and what he was able to do in his 29 years at Postgrove to, to you, who had been an assistant for almost 20 years. Uh, it was an, a no-brainer, and I know you wanted to put a little uh, slant on this yourself, you, you know, you, but you learned a lot from your, your high school coach. You learned a lot from your college coaches. I talked to, to you before about it but uh, th this team really is is playing well and, and you deserve a lot of credit because you know that's that's not an easy thing to do and, and you've done it very very well well I appreciate that um, like I said I think you mentioned it before having a, a talented senior class that kind of knows how to win and knows how to get there and through hard work and determination that was that was ingrained in them 
and they just kind of continued and fostered that throughout the year, and hopefully that continues with the younger kids. Yeah, absolutely. Again, a big game against Pottstown. You played them once. Uh, I know it's never fun to play the same team twice. You always feel, uh, you know, a little bit, I don't know, leery, I guess, uh, particularly when you, you had your way with them 45-6 to six the first time. Uh, you knew, and we all knew, that Pottstown was not that same team. They had improved. They were coming off a big win over Springfield Monco in the, in the district uh, semifinals. But uh, you guys certainly came out and set the tempo early and, and that offensive and defensive line that we talked about really did a nice job. Yeah, they, they pretty much set the tone you know, of the game. Uh, we had a 98-yard drive. I think right. at one point yeah. that really made it 13-7. to seven and, and give all the credit in the world to Passan. They battled us. I mean, uh, at the end of the first half, it's 19-6. It's very much a ball game. But as you said, our offensive line really, you know, wore on their defensive front and in the end it pops open some holes that allowed Isaiah Taylor and Jay Sisko and uh, Colbert to get through. And, you know, in the end we eventually wore them down. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I mentioned the fact that I didn't realize uh, Taylor had such great, great uh, breakaway speed. You know, he had been a between-the-tackles kind of guy, short, stocky, certainly very strong from the waist down. and breaks a lot of tackles, but boy, I saw a couple of the, the, the defensive backs and safety for Potsdown had the angle on him a couple of times, and phew, he outran them. Uh, some pretty good speed there for Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah has great speed. He, uh, he's always in, it seems like, the final heat of the uh, Pac-10 championships okay. for sprinters, but you know he, he's learning the position of running back. He's learning how to run the lanes, and he figures that out almost Every game, it's you know your first year there. It's kind of a kind of a process you go through, and he's really really picked it up at this point, and uh, he's hitting the holes well, and he's hitting the holes fast and hard. So he's going to be a good little running back for us. Well, you know, it's funny because I know a lot of kids when they they want to play running back, they just want to get the ball and run as fast as they can. Right. You know, they don't set up their blocks. They they miss the lanes as you mentioned. You know, off tackle stuff. One of the things I thought Rasul Faison did probably as as good as anybody I've ever seen in the high school. You know, he let things happen and he set his linemen up and and uh, now I see Taylor doing the same type of thing now once you get in the open field boom turn it on that second gear but he really has learned how to be a running back and that's exactly right he's he's waiting for his blocks to be set up he's he's seeing a block and, and knowing how to cut off that particular block he knows where the blocks are coming from and the angles are there so 100 percent he, he learned those things from rasul um and as Rasul will tell you, I mean, that takes some reps and some game time to do so. And, and at the later stages of this year, uh, Isaiah is really doing a good job of picking He's, that up. He certainly is. And, of course, you know, a lot of it starts with uh, your quarterback, the guy behind center. You call the little coach on the field. Uh, he certainly does a, a great job. And I don't want to call him a game manager and, and all those little cliches that they do out there. But, you know, Jay Sisko certainly knows when to do some different things. He, you got your run pass options or whatever, and he hands the ball off. And then all of a sudden he'll pull when he sees the end crash. And then he certainly had another solid, solid game for you Friday night. Jay is just the consummate winner. He is a dream um, quarterback to have in your first year as a head coach. Uh, he is the coach on the field. We, like I said before, we're at the point where we almost read each other's mind. He, we can look at fronts and coverages and, and right now understand what play he's going to run. Um, and like you said, he is not a game manager by any chance. This young man can make some plays yep. with his feet, when his, with his arm if need be. And, he is one of the most intelligent football players uh, I've had the pleasure to coach. He's a really, really excellent football player. Now, what kinds of things worried you about going into Friday night game, other than the fact you're playing them again, uh, you know, and the, you know, the whole bit? Uh, what, what kinds of things had you concerned about Friday night uh, to get ready for the Trojans? Oh, the Trojans were just a, a whole different team from when we first saw them. They really swarmed to the ball defensively. Offensively, they seemed to have found a rhythm with uh, Josiah Wiggins, at quarterback. I think people forget how young they are. They're going to be a darn good team next year with a lot of the juniors and sophomores that they have playing. Uh, Nehemiah Figueroa, what a wonderful kid. Who I also had the pleasure of teaching and coaching when he was in ninth grade. He is a, a great senior leader. I mean, he kind of did it all for them. And I tell you what, at safety, he made some game-saving tackles yeah, yeah, in, a lot of, yeah. in a lot of plays yeah. that people don't even realize. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he led the, led the area in uh, interceptions. He had mm -hmm. a good year that way. And, and we had him on the show last week, and this is a really a neat kid and, and uh, an interesting guy. And, and uh, I know all the coaches really look up to him as well as the, the younger players, but he certainly did have a heck of a year. The Darden boys were certainly someone you had to keep an eye on uh, as well. All right, well, let's look ahead now. All uh, right, you're where you want to be. Uh, unfortunately, for those people who don't know, the game was uh, originally scheduled to be at Phoenixville again this weekend, uh, Friday night, for the first round of the state playoffs. But Jersey Shore is, is quite a distance away, so they moved the game to Northern Lehigh, I believe, right? Yes. Northern Lehigh, up in Slatington or somewhere up there. Uh, they knocked off the Seal and Grove Seals. And uh, so they're going to be taking on the Falcons up there at Northern Lehigh. Uh, tell me a little bit about these guys. Well, this is just a tough-nosed football team. This is a very, very good football team that mirrors us in a lot of ways. They like to run the ball, and they're going to make sure they stop the run. And um, they're very aggressive in, in, in either approach, whether you're talking offense or defense. And the, the key to this team, I really believe in, in learning more and more about them, is they had one of their seniors get paralyzed in summer uh, football. And, they're really, really rallying behind them. Rallying yeah, behind them. Yeah. And, you know, any team that's, you know, charged up on that kind of emotion and good emotion and really sticking by their teammate, uh, that's a scary team to play. Now, I, I don't know much about Jersey Shore, but I kind of relate them to like an interborough. Mm -hmm. they, they like an interborough kind of a team, a physical team that likes to run the ball. And, 100%. Yeah. They, they don't try to trick you. They, they, you know what's coming at you. Um, they're, like I said, they're just a tough nosed group of kids that they really fundamentally execute all their plays. Um, they, they're schematically, they're very sound and they're well coached. Um, again, they on offense and defense, you're going to see two very similar teams. You might have a hour and a half game. Yeah, there there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I know you were concerned a little bit about penalties in the last couple of uh, weeks that, you know, you really wanted to work on that and clean that up. Uh, again, you know, the conditions were not great on Friday night, but you seem to have them a little bit under control uh, as far as that goes. Are you happy or satisfied with that, or is that still something that you think you need to work on? I think you continually have to have good special teams play and you got to, uh, you know, eradicate all penalties as much as possible. I mean, we had our penalties. We didn't turn the ball over. Um, if you do those two things, you lose the special team game, you turn the ball over, you, you miss assignments. Those things can disrupt any good football team. And uh, when you make those mistakes, you're going you're gonna to lose. But we didn't make those on Friday night. And fortunately enough, that allowed us to win the game. OK, so what are you going to work on this week? Obviously, it's a, a big week because uh, it, it's winter go home now at this point. And uh, you certainly want to keep that season going. What, what kinds of things are you guys concentrating on uh, this week to get ready for Jersey Shore? We're just going to essentially, you know, perfect our game as much as possible. We're going to not trick anyone. We're going to run the ball a little bit, throw a little bit of play action. Um, they run a goal, goal line like defense in some sets. They run a, every version of the 50 that, that you can think of they're going to throw at you. So we're going to just work on assignment, alignment. And we're going to make sure that we protect the ball and do the things necessary to put our players in the right spot. Well, you know, this is a time of year also where, you know, do you, do you worry about the monotony of practice and things because it's sort of a long season? You've already played 12 games. Uh, I, I can't imagine getting tired of football at this point because this is really what you play for. But do you try to change some things up and, and have some fun with these guys at, at this point to keep them excited at practice? My guys are fun to be around already. They're just – we were watching film today, and, and they know how to, you know, get the business done first, and they'll have a little bit of fun here and there. They're just a super group of kids. Um, every day I walk out on that field, I'm really, really proud to be their coach. And, and I think that mentality has allowed them to be winners. And, and, and frankly, not a lot of people thought we'd be where we were. And it, those kids have uh, done everything to make sure that um, they prove the naysayers wrong. And once again, we're 11-1. Well, I, I, and I, I'll be honest with you, Bill. I, I think that what your kids wanted to prove, and, and you and whatever else, is that there was more to the Pasco Falcons than this Rasul Faison. I mean, he was a once-in-a-lifetime player, almost 3,000 yards his senior year, 42 touchdowns. I mean, it's certainly an honor to coach a kid like that. But I, I think your guys really set out this year, you know, Bedolas and Seaman and Tornetta and Cisco and these guys – really uh, set out to say, you know what, hey, we're more than just a one-man team. Oh, sure. These kids, those guys that you just mentioned, they were the juniors 
last year, the unsung heroes that did all the little things necessary for those, for that senior class, who we, I think we graduated 18, we graduated 15 starters. Um, so, and frankly, when you lose a legendary coach, um, a player of that caliber, and a class of that caliber, there's going to be people that think there's going to be a dip, but they wanted to prove them wrong, and they did. Well, I certainly, you guys have not skipped a beat at all, and, and they're a joy to watch. And, and this is going to be our game of the week, the, the PCTV network. Uh, we were sort of so excited about going down to Phoenixville again, <laughs> but uh, we'll make the trip up to uh, Northern Lehigh up in Sladington on Friday night. So we'll have a good time up there. Again, the game cannot be replayed until Saturday. So all the people that want to watch the game will have to wait until Saturday uh, for that ball game. But we're going to make the trip as well. And, and I'd love to see you keep on going. And I, I'm not ready to give up football yet. Uh, and I'm sure you're not either. No way. Me, me and the kids, we want to be around uh, for as long as we can be. And you know, on behalf of the Pottsville football program, we'd really like to thank you for all that you do for football athletes you know, across the area. What you do is really commendable, and we all appreciate it. Well, I, I appreciate that, and that's that's the reason why I do it. You know, as people always say, ah, well, you know, you're getting older, blah, 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 you know, and the Hall of Fame thing that I do and, and the shows here and everything. I just love it. It's, it's because of things like that, and uh, I hope you guys keep going, keep going, keep going. Next week is our award, uh, is our award show, and uh, we'll have to give out some good awards next week, which that should be a lot of fun as well. But we want to thank you, Bill, for stopping by. Hi, you're great. And again, I'll see your dad at the gym tomorrow. Uh, he's up there at the Planet Fitness with me at the, uh, the old folks home. He'll be walking and talking on the treadmill. And I'll get the game plan and I'll get everything straightened out. Uh, he certainly is a very, very proud papa as well. He should. 11-1 in his first year at the helm of Potsgrove uh, and also the District 1 champs and hopefully a lot more football to go with him. All right, we're going to take a quick time out. When we come back, I got my buddy Joe C. in the house, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the debacle last night. And uh, we also have my, my little girl from Dallas, Fort Worth, Robin the Sports Angel. We're going to have her on the air, too, to, to give us a business as well. But, again, I'm going to thank Bill Hawthorne for stopping over. I'm Dave Reiner, the Monday Morning Quarterback, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. Doc's Irish Pub, the hottest new sports bar around. From live entertainment to countless draft beers. From awesome burgers to the new outside tiki bar. Numerous TVs and Doc's friendly service. Doc's Irish Pub is the place to be. Stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a delicious bite to eat on a fall night. Doc's Irish Pub. Established in 1916 and granted membership into the Philadelphia Goth Association in 1920, Brookside Country Club is well known for its challenging layout and true fast greens. The William Gordon design provides a challenge for golfers of all abilities. Brookside Country Club offers traditional club amenities in a family-friendly atmosphere. Brookside Country Club, where elegance and excellence are par for the course. At Blahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Blahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Balajos of Balajos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community.
we're back. There we go. <laughs> Jim and I are catching you should up see. a whole time. I, I'm supposed here. to see something uh, besides uh, my oh, scalp my in that picture. Is that what you're right. saying? Yeah, we're the dynamic <laughs> duo. We're back. That's for sure. And we have our old girlfriend from the Dallas Fort Worth area, Robin, the sports angel is on the line with it as well. And uh, when I originally invited her to be on the show, I was hoping the Eagles might win so we could give her the business. But uh, it doesn't look that good, Robin. How are you? I am great, guys. I think the sports angel just coming. You booked me too soon. I think I brought them good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you certainly did. How uh, are you guys? It's great to be back in your market. Uh, I know. Hey, Robin. It's great to, great to have you. And, uh, you know, Joe, Joe got a new job, so he's not able to be here every week. But I told him, I said, you got to be here the Monday after the, uh, after the Dallas game because we're going to have Robin on the air, and, and she wants to take a shot at us. So uh, he was able to make it, and I was happy for that as well. Joe, can I just add in uh, that in 30, was it 35 degree weather, they took over your turf. <laughs> they did. They, they did. did. They did. They did. They did. So it is 35 degrees here in Dallas as we speak. So oh my! We'll take the wind, but you can take the cold. Back. Yeah. How about it? I, I hear you. I hear you. Well, listen, Rob. You know, it, it was kind of unusual because you know there was a little bit of tumultuous times down in in Dallas. You know, uh, Troy Aikman had his comments about they need an overhaul, and and uh, Jason Garrett's job was maybe on the line, and whatever. Ever. And uh, coming up after a short week, uh, they really played well and, and deserved to win that ball game last night. Well, I think they gave one of their best performances, if not their best performance of the season. I don't necessarily count the big grandiose win over the Jaguars, but uh, as their best performance, I think taking down the Super Bowl champions constitutes best performance what do you guys think oh wow wow that's a that was a direct that was a direct hit yeah that that. was a direct hit you know and and it was very nice and it's so funny because robin is one of the kindest and sweetest persons you'll ever meet in the whole wide world until like right now until right now now. yeah Yeah. until the monday after the game day yeah <laughs> yeah, no halos now, Robin. No halos at all. <laughs> I, I'll tell you the thing last night, Robin. The thing last night that I saw was the uh, the defensive line, uh, especially Lawrence, who's been playing unbelievable. But uh, the defensive line really pushed on the offensive line because you know we have some injuries and and things going on there. But the key that I thought was give the ball to Ezekiel Elliott and then work and work. Uh, Amari Cooper a little bit, but then you have Gallup, and then you have what Daniel Schultz, Alan Hearns. You have these guys coming up. Beasley, and, and and then and then Zach, uh, you know Dak Prescott fumbles the ball, and of course it bounces straight up into his hands, and he, he's able to get rid of it, the the throw it out of bounds. But the thing that that really confused me was how poorly the Eagles are tackling. I mean. What do you think about that? I mean, I honestly, you agree? I a lot of the conversation here in Dallas today, it wasn't necessarily how well the Cowboys played, because personally I still feel like Dak Prescott seems a little timid in the pocket. It's still yeah. taking him a very long time to make his reads. Although his accuracy was spot on, the stars just aligned for him, and uh, in adding Amari Cooper to the lineup, I think, gave him some extra confidence, and then Ezekiel Elliott was just on fire. But I think it also came down to what did the Eagles eat that morning? <laughs> yeah, and really. I don't think the Eagles were playing at <laughs> I think their they, optimum performance. They had their no, Thanksgiving exactly. Day turkey a little bit no, early because they, they, they had played the like slows. Turkeys. They played they like turkeys. They had the slows. I'll tell you, Robin. Holy smoke! I was just—I'll be honest with you, Robin. I was glad that I—I—I I, I thought if Garrett would have given the ball to Ezekiel Elliott the whole first half, they would have been up three touchdowns because the Eagles couldn't tackle them. They couldn't stop them. Um, they got a little pass happy there. I'm thinking. Okay, Okay, good. Throw the ball because I'd rather have Prescott with the ball than Elliott uh, against our, uh, the Eagles' defense. And then once they started feeding him the ball, you know, he does his little feed me thing. Uh, he, he was unstoppable in that second half. Unstoppable. I mean, can you imagine rushing 19 times, 151 yards, uh, the fourth highest of his career, plus a couple of touchdowns. I think he just had that holiday spirit going and he was just practicing the Lord's leaping 
thing, you know? Yeah, I jumped was right he, over to the was second. He, was, he, <laughs> was, was he a hurdler at yeah, Ohio he State? He was a hurdler at Ohio yeah, State. Yeah, he was in high school. Yeah. I know that. I mean, I know. Yeah, uh, he was. He was a champion, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Okay, because yeah. I know Hunt, uh, a couple of the running backs, uh, Hunt from Kansas City, he hurdled some people. But I don't think I've ever seen anyone hurdle someone that that high. Well, he was because he was almost. It was was like he was was almost standing up. (laughs) It was. It was crazy. You would have thought Bill Belichick was there for at some point putting springs under the field. Yeah, how about it? That was just a Bill Belichick game going on. Yeah, it's crazy. Somehow, somehow, Garrett and the Cowboys had some insider information. Is well, what, what's the what's the what's the uh, temperature like down there as far as Garrett? Because you know he had been sort of a hands-off guy because Jerry Jones really is fond of him and likes him as a coach. But the rumors up our way was that you know after, had the Eagles won that game on Sunday night, you know it might have been one of the last games for Jason Garrett. Uh, are you getting that same feeling down in uh, down in your way, Robin? It, you know, it depends on the week. You know, Jason Garrett is so likable and Jerry Jones really they have a great relationship but I think the big win Sunday you know giving them hope still going into the postseason has saved him greatly and this is the one thing that I have have difficulty with and I know other media do as well because I hear the, the conversation and that is that He keeps saying how great Dak is. And, yes, Dak obviously has got great potential, but you've got to harness it uh, to where, like Troy Aikman was saying, it's got to be consistent. You can't be the cowboy of the future and have a good game every other two games. It has to be consistent to be a championship quarter, a championship uh, level quarterback. And for him, after the Texans' uh, loss, to say that Dak played well, no, he didn't. Right. No, right. he didn't. You yeah. can't blame yeah. that on the the rest of the team. Dak did not play well. You're you're right on with that. And even last night when uh, Chris Collinsworth was pointing out uh, that how many times he shuffled, he was shuffling his feet to get ready to throw, and just kind of just the hesitation. And, and then you hear Dak saying, you know, I have to do a better job. I have to do this. I have to do that better. But from his first year until now. It's been kind of a, a decline. It hasn't been a, 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 a yeah, he hasn't where he hasn't, better, he hasn't yeah, really right. improved to the point, like you said, he's going to take him to that next level. And it just seems like he's kind of flattened out or even declined a little bit. And you, well, you rely a little bit too much on Zeke Elliott. And then, you know, you lose Des Bryant. And now you're putting Amari Cooper in. And let's face it, there, he's not going to just like uh, Tate did last night. He's not going to learn the system that quickly. It's going to be a week or two. But I got to be honest with you, I think that's a great fit for them and uh, well, with I Amari Cooper. Leadership-wise, I'm hoping, yes. and I think the team is hoping, that Amari Cooper will be much more of an influence than Des Bryant was. You know, Des Bryant had some incredible talent, but he just couldn't get out of his own head. Yeah, and right. And so hopefully Amari Cooper will be a much better addition just for even mentorship on the team. How about that young? How about the young linebacker made a couple big plays for you uh, last night, Rob? Now Van Der Esch. Van Der Esch, Van Der Esch. yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very he did performed really well, and uh, also you know uh, coming up. I'm trying to go back down, scroll down to my stats on him. Because uh, we love we love Sean Lee Vander, around this area because he's Vander a Penn Esch. State guy, you know. So this Van Der Esch really stepped up and filled in for for Sean yeah. Lee. It first time, first career interception in the first quarter uh, definitely kept them alive and uh, gave them something to, to go on in the second quarter. And then I think the fourth quarter is what was most important for the Cowboys because you've got to finish strong. And, uh, and they definitely came up big in the fourth quarter. Well, you know, they said that on that screenplay that Clement, when it was third and two, and the Eagles looked like they were driving, and there were two blockers out in front, and, and Van Der Esch beat the two, uh, defeated the two blockers and made that nice shoestring tackle on Clement, stop him short of that first down on that screenplay. I mean, that was, a, that was a veteran, veteran linebacker play, Robin. Absolutely. You know, I think on the defense, we're so used to the linebacker unit being led by Sean Lee all the time. Right. So it was really great to see a rookie linebacker in there just go for it and, uh, and it all pan out well. And, you know, I think this was a very pivotal game. One, it's, you know, it's a division game. It's really important, especially with the Cowboys being 
what are we down? One and a half, two games. To yeah, the, to the Redskins. Redskins. Yeah, yeah, they're six uh, and three, and uh, the Cowboys are four and five. Yeah, two games. So, uh, so I think for the defense, just for all three units to really be in sync. Um, and come away on the road. So this is their first win of the season on the road, which is a big thing. I, I think that will help them get over whatever their their mental um, block, block has been yeah, on the yeah, road yeah. Uh, going into the second part of the season. All right, well, they got Atlanta coming up, Robin, before we have to say goodbye here to you. we got they got a big game at Atlanta uh, next week, and uh, what do the Cowboys have to do to, to take on Matt Ryan and, uh, and the Falcons? Man, they've got to pull out another Eagles performance. That's what they've got to do. They are not going to go in there and uh, walk away with a win if they're not on on top of their game with all three uh, all three uh, phases. Sports. Yeah, right. And especially, and I'm going to say especially special teams. I think in Atlanta, playing in the dome, I think special teams becomes a huge priority to walk away with that win absolutely absolutely well listen robin i want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule hey i know i know that you were really involved with the veterans too and uh and i'm sure there was a lot of great things going on uh for veterans day down in your area we had a lot of great things happening up here as well and and uh keep up the good work with all that as well Thanks, gentlemen. I encourage your listeners to visit uh, our, my group, AllianceForTheBrave.com. Check out what we're doing. Get involved with us. We are national and now have a global presence on Armed Forces Radio. So thank you for that plug opportunity, you guys. All right. Well, listen, it's always great. Always Keep in touch, and uh, hopefully we'll talk again before Christmas. Maybe. But uh, it's always great, Robin, and keep up all the great things you're doing down there. Thanks, guys, and you'll be home for Christmas, so that'll be nice. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robin, again, thanks Good again. Night, See you, Robin. Right, Robin. Take Robin, care. Robin, the, the Val the Tuno, the, yeah, the sports the angel. Best. She really oh is. God, she is so uh, fun. She is unbelievable. Well, let's, let's get a quick break in there, Joe, and then we're going to do our little game ball thing and our five-pack picks, and, and uh, we'll head out for, for next week. But take a quick break here. Joe and I are here, the dynamic duo. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. Doc's Irish Pub, the hottest new sports bar around. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from awesome burgers to the new outside tiki bar, numerous TVs, and Doc's friendly service. Doc's Irish Pub is the place to be. Stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a delicious bite to eat on a fall night. Doc's Irish Pub. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Dynamic duo 
Pacino back here on set at the uh, PC TV Network Studios at Pasadena High School. Again, Dave Ryan there, my buddy Joe C. You know, Joe, we always have a game ball, uh, and this week is certainly no exception. Uh, our game ball was brought to you by my good friend, Paul Strauss, at the Styling Room, 943 North Hanover Street. I just stopped in there to see him the other day and had a good chuckle with Paul, and I see him up at the Planet Fitness as well. He's a great guy. Go ahead, bro. Who do you got? I'm going to go with uh, Mitchell Trubisky from the Bears. Why are, we, why no, are, you, laughing? Why are no. you laughing? Well, because you weren't on him for a while, and I, I sort of like that. I'll tell you what. Now, you're are going you're, there. Yeah, yeah, I am see? going there. <laughs> um, what, 22 for 30, 355 yards Three TDs, and he ran for a TD. And the Bears are looking really, really good. Their defense is what, uh, between Khalil Mack and, and Smith, the linebacker from Georgia. Yeah. I'm telling you. Hey, watch out for well, the Bears. Well, wait here who I'm All giving right. my game ball to. Zach, go Zach Ertz. No. <laughs> Matt Barkley. How about Matt <laughs> Barkley? Matt Barkley. He yeah, was out, he got he a was W. Out, he was out He's of out football. football. Yeah. He comes back and he plays for the, the Bills who are downtrodden. They're like playing for the first overall draft pick. And he and he has a great day. He throws a couple of touchdown passes, no interceptions. And the Bills have their best win of the season. They knock off the Jets 41-10. to 10. And they're calling for Todd Bowles' head and whatever. Uh, who knows what's going on up there in all those crazy spots. And, but, and, hey, how about Matt Barkley? Yeah, how about McCoy had a great game, McCoy too. did. That Shady helped, had over 100. Sure. But anybody well. could be better than uh, Peterman. And then they oh, took, yeah, they were and terrible. And then they took Anderson uh, off the Derek couch, Anderson. too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, Good. well, let's finish right. up with all our right. five-pack picks again. All right. That's always a fun way to end up. I beat my son. Last week we were I was four and one, he was three and two. Who's who's the official record keeper? Of I have it written you, down. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I was four and oh going oh, every into the week Eagles. you're like you win. No, I don't. Every I do week. not win. Oh, no. I no? lost I lost to you actually once this year. <laughs> I, I, no, can I have a tape of that? Yeah. Matt, can you tape that and replay they, they, it for me? They had to talk me off the bridge. <laughs> I, was <ready> to <laughs> uh, I haven't seen any flags going this year. Where's your flag? I got it. I got I'll, it. I got I'll, it. I'll I'll I got it. All right. All right go but again, ahead, we want to thank the people at Izzy's on third. Here we go. Quickly. Right, go. Tonight's game. Giants oh, and Sam Oh, my God. Who cares? I know. I'm going to take the Giants. Oh, man. I was going to. Really? I'll go San Fran. I'll uh, go with Nick Mullen. I don't Mullen. know. I don't know. If, I don't know. One, <laughs> don't one know. game wonder? All right, well, I God. said, so on in, in Thursday night, we have Green Bay at Seattle. All of a sudden, it's a pretty That's good game. That's a pretty good game, right? Yeah, Green it's Bay at Seattle. Seattle. Yes, take it, it is. Seattle. All right, I'll go with, I'll go with Green Bay. I'm going to take. Aaron Rodgers. Now, oh, we God. talked to Robin a little bit about the Cowboys and the Falcons. They need to work on their consistency. I, I know who I'm taking. Okay. Because Atlanta got beat up pretty bad yesterday okay. in Cleveland. Okay. I'm taking Atlanta. I am, too. I got to go There's there. There's going to be a letdown there. And the Vikings and the Bears. Now, here's your That's Bears. A, yeah, here's I'm, your Mitchell I'm Trubisky. Gonna, and I'm going to go. It's at Chicago. I'm taking Chicago. I'm going to Chicago, too. And, okay. right. and in the last game, we, we go down to the Big Easy. Ooh. Oh, man. Ooh. What are you going to do Ooh. there? Let me tell you something. That's a tough game because the Eagles coming off of the loss, right? Yeah. The embarrassing loss yeah. at home. And then there's New Orleans yeah. going into Cincinnati and putting up 51. Know. Yeah. With Mr. Breeze. Yeah. I'm going to have to take – I'm taking New Orleans. Oh, my. I know. Oh, my, Joe. people just turned off this TV They did. Set. I'm going Eagles. Yeah, I can't go. You have I can't, to. I can't it's your go. show. I can't it's go. It's the MMQB I show. Can't. Dave Rodenauer. I just see if you can get <laughs> now, away with taking – Now I'm going – yeah, I'm going – now I, I can't go. But i tell you what, man. Breeze is my man, though. Oh, is man. I, I'll tell you who I really like is that Alvin Kamara. He is my one of my new guys. I really like him. Absolutely. He's a heck of a, a football player. And I tell you, Joe, I don't know. Ronald Darby's out. Uh, they got people they banged got up. Of, I don't know if Lane Johnson will be back or whatever. But, man, they, they got to regroup, buddy. You know, they give, what, Adams, Josh Adams, seven carries. They get away from the thing. I'm telling you, John DiFilippo and Frank, Frank Reich, Reich are a big loss that – is really, I think, I'm starting to feel it more so now because of that. And and look at look at like somebody like Gruden, let's say John Gruden over in uh, in Oakland, uh, quarterback guy, right? Who has quarterback show? You could, and look at David Carr. He's not doing what he did last year. It's the system. It's the way they have to. There's got to be some type of learning curve in there. And I think I think Carson Wentz is. I don't know if he's confused. Or if he's trying to get rid of the ball, I, they're probably saying to him, "Hey, don't get out of the pocket. 
try. They don't want to get hurt. They don't want to get hurt. We don't want to get hurt. But where does he excel? Rolling out of the pocket. Well, we'll see. It's going to be interesting. I'm just saying. It's going to be interesting. I'll tell you what. I want to thank everybody. It was a great show. had a good time with Rick breaking down the 2018 season. Of course, Billy Hawthorne, one of the great young coaches in our area, and we wish him nothing but the best. Remember, the PCTV Network will be out there at Northern Lehigh for the Pottsgrove Jersey Shore game. For Joe C., I'm Dave Ridenour. Thanks for watching the Vlahos Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show.